the heart has to be there all the time when you're exercising leadership. Why? For two main reasons. Number one, because you're a human being. So how can you not carry your heart with you metaphorically, not just physically all the time? You're a bundle of emotions. And because the people whom you're trying to mobilize are also heart, not just mind. So leadership in that context is the way your heart is interacting with their heart. Your emotional dimension is interacting with their emotional dimension so that the level of connection is as deep as it can be, is as authentic as it can be. That's why leadership is not just a journey of the mind, a challenge of the mind, but it's also a challenge of the heart. So the heart has to be there all the time. In fact, even when you're using your cognitive part, your intellect, you're acting at an intellectual level, even when you're doing that, you still keep your heart in the game. You keep your heart in the game. Why? Because you're dealing with people. And when you speak to people, you're never speaking to their mind alone. Never. Because the mind is connected to their heart, of course, metaphorically. Remember that beautiful phrase that says, people might forget what you said, but they will never forget how you made them feel. Hmm? Can you imagine how beautiful this sentence is? How deep this sentence is? People will never forget how you make them feel. And because people are emotional beings, they're feeling all the time. So even when you, yourself, are engaged at the intellectual level with people, they are also there at the emotional level. Your words have emotional impact on them. Whatever you're telling them on how to move you know, as the next step of your journey or how to look at their current reality has an emotional aspect. They're feeling it. They're either scared or they're happy or they're hopeful or they're encouraged or they're discouraged or they're in pain or they're in euphoria or they're in ecstasy or they're, you know, depressed or they're optimistic. There must be in some state of feeling. And you are with them in that place. So your heart has to be with you 100% of the time. It doesn't mean that you have to use it 100% of the time at an emotional level. You go hug people, cry with them, laugh with them, you know, whatever that emotional aspect is. But even when you're speaking intellectually, even when you're speaking from the mind, you're always carrying your heart in your hand so that you can feel your pulse and so that your pulse will feel their pulse and so that you're always having your pulse in harmony with their pulse. Only through that you can mobilize people. Because people, they're not computers. People are big hearts. Technology, the digital world, is a reality. That's how it is. In the past, hundreds of years ago, or until hundreds of years ago, i.e. for tens of thousands and maybe, you know, hundreds of thousands of years, interaction was face to face. Before writing was created, there were no letters. And people were living in small groups, so interaction was face to face. So exercising leadership at that time meant face to face interaction. And that is the most natural and easy way of exchanging feelings and ideas and thoughts and emotions. Now it's a different reality because we have a new layer. And that's technology. And it's not just a new layer. It's a major new layer. It's a major new layer. Because who doesn't have a smartphone now? 
Many people have smartphone. Interaction is now through technology. People have fans, friends on their social media platforms. People interact with those who are around them on a physical platform, but they're also interacting with many more people at the digital platform through the social media and through emails and technology, you know, Facebook, Instagram, uh, LinkedIn, you name it. And the new ones every day. So, what's the challenge? Did human nature change? Never. It didn't change. Did the people, the nature of the people whom you want to mobilize change and lead change? No. Did you change as a person? No, because you're still a human being. So the challenge of understanding and interacting with people at the emotional level in the digital age is still there. And that's what leadership in the 21st century has to understand. How to use the digital platform, the digital age, the digital communication space so that you can mobilize people through interacting with them intellectually and emotionally through these platforms, through these technology. How do you make your heart talk to their hearts, the hearts of the thousands and the hundreds and maybe you know the millions when they're not seeing you physically? Now, there is a simple but magical word for that. It's called being authentic being genuine, being real. When you start from that place, place of authenticity, being genuine and real, not fake, people get it. Evolution and nature has trained us for millions of years on how to pick up emotional signals from gestures. Think about yourself, how many times you've interpreted a gesture at an emotional level. Somebody saw that you needed something, you needed a tissue or you needed to drink and without even asking made the gesture of bringing you a glass of water. You don't just look at it as a physical gesture, you look at it as an emotional gesture and you say how kind and how beautiful and if it's touching, maybe you have a tear in your eye. Maybe you smile. Maybe you hug that person. So, people feel that. And when you speak from the heart, when you go, when you communicate from a space of authenticity, of being genuine, that eventually has to translate itself in whatever you say and whatever you write and whenever whatever you do and when it's, it's audio people feel it in your voice when it's text people feel it in your choice of words and vocabulary and when it's visual people see it on your face so keep this in mind now maybe it's a bigger challenge you know when it's just text or audio maybe it's a bigger challenge because they're not seeing you and these are new platforms, right? This is where you being conscious of this and making an effort to be connected more with your heart, with your soul, with your spirit, so that you can connect from a place of authenticity becomes more important. So always keep that in mind. Always speak from your heart, not just your mind. And always, always, always connect using the power of your authenticity the power of your being genuine, the power of your being real, the power of your honesty, integrity, the power of just being who you really are and what you really mean, your real, 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 real good intention. And people will get that. And that's how you mobilize in the 21st century.
you have no idea how important and big this question is because in leadership you need a good mind so that you cover the intellectual aspect of leadership understanding the problem analyzing the problem properly the diagnosis part of the problem looking at options coming up with creating solutions providing alternatives weighing things and so many other aspects that require a heavy intellectual investment but at the same time you need a great heart in fact maybe sometimes you need to have a heart that's even as big or even bigger than your mind tell you why what's leadership leadership is about mobilizing people for a purpose that would lead to their survival and growth when does this happen in one or of two situations things are fine they could be better so you mobilize them to make things better to create a better reality by creating better opportunities or acting in a better way or things are really bad your entire survival as a group organization family country is at stake and you need to mobilize people so that they can get out of this dangerous position solve their problems and go back to normal life and start moving forward towards growth in all these scenarios you're talking about people and when you talk about mobilizing people there is an important aspect that is about mobilizing the minds of the people but there's also a big aspect about mobilizing their heart their emotions because people are what are people bundles of emotions covered with a layer of intellect but mainly we're emotional beings of course we're also spiritual beings we are social beings and intellectual beings and physical beings but we're mainly emotional beings also so to mobilize people who are to a large extent emotional beings needs a big heart because emotional beings cry emotional beings feel scared emotional beings have hopes emotional beings feel disappointment emotional beings panic emotional beings get depressed get angry go into despair this might be the condition of the people whom you're trying to mobilize the entire spectrum of emotions of normal legitimate human emotions the emotions that are evoked that are created by the nature of reality itself so if things are tough emotions would be of you know of, of fear of anger of sadness of panic of depression of despair so to manage all that to mobilize this reality you need to have even a bigger heart you need to have a heart that would understand what your people are going through you need to have a heart that would connect with what people are going through at the emotional level you need to have a heart that would guide and inspire the hearts of the people whom you're trying to mobilize now to have such a heart and to give them hope and to encourage them and to get them to summon and evoke their own strengths now to have such a heart you need to take care of this heart 
you need to take care of your heart and that's 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 an entire universe because whatever your people are going through if you're really connected with them at an emotional and spiritual at a soul level whatever they're going through you will also be going through that you will also be going through the same feelings you can't be with people who are scared and not feel that feeling you can't be with people who are sad who are panicking who are crying who are you know grieving their losses and not feel what they're feeling maybe not entirely but you you're part of the same you're breathing the same emotional air and in some cases you will feel it at a more magnified level because all the tension that's going through them because you're holding them the same tension multiplied you know the summation of all of that tension that's going through them individually is going through your heart like when you have children you know one child is sick okay you feel with with that child when you have three children and three of them are sick or they had an accident imagine what's going through your heart you're going your, it's the pain and the compassion and the interaction that the three of your kids are going through and it's always dynamic because leadership is dynamic because the journey of survival and growth the journey of making it through trouble through difficulties through risk through danger and the journey of making it into a higher place of development of learning and growth it's an emotional journey as well so all of that is going through your heart to survive and to make it through and to fulfill your role as somebody who is mobilizing mobilizing these people exercising through exercising leadership you have to take care of your heart how do you take care of your heart by respecting your heart by respecting your humanity by giving yourself permission to feel what you're feeling by giving yourself permission to process emotions like human beings do by allowing yourself to cry by allowing yourself to be scared by allowing yourself to be exhausted and tired by allowing yourself to panic sometimes even discreetly by asking people to support you by surrounding your people surround yourself with people who could not only embrace you and, and advise you intellectually not only by helping you at a cognitive level but also by embracing and hugging your heart and your soul because you need that you need that for your emotional sanity you need that for your spiritual sanity for the sanity of your soul you need that so that you can stay on your feet so that you continue carrying them so you need to take care of your heart you need to know when you give your heart a break you need to know how do you, when do you give your heart permission to cry you need to know when you give your heart permission to you know to uh, to to jump and to dance you need to know go you need to know when you give your when you tell your heart to be numb sometimes because sometimes you have to be numb because the amount of pressure is so much that you can't take it all so you have to be numb just like therapists do just like you know therapists do when they're helping somebody going through who's going through tough times they can't take that in all the time and they can't take it home sometimes they have to numb themselves emotionally so that they can help that person just like a doctor a surgeon at an emergency department emergency ward would do when this surgeon this doctor emergency doctor receives people who have been through a car accident through through some kind of major physical trauma they need to control their emotions and numb themselves so that they can perform technically to the best of their ability otherwise they will collapse so taking care of your heart is at the heart of your journey of exercising smart and great and good leadership it's at the heart of that because you're in it intellectually and emotionally and physically maybe and spiritually and socially every aspect of you is in it now of course that depends on the nature of the challenge itself because some challenges are far more challenging than others right but in general when you're dealing with people when you're mobilizing them you're also carrying them you're carrying their mind and their heart and to carry their mind you use your mind and to carry their heart you use your heart and so carry them efficiently effectively you have to take care 
of your heart.